Dead Man Walking, the 1995 film starring Susan Sarandon and Sean Penn brought to life Sister Helen Prejean's book of the same name, which launched Prejean's worldwide crusade to abolish the death penalty. When a condemned prisoner begins that somber procession toward the execution chamber, the prison guard announces these words, dead man walking. They begin moving down the corridor under the stark fluorescent lights, shrouded in silence for this last grim ritual. Jesus himself was a dead man walking in those final days in Jerusalem. He knew death awaited him. There was no turning back. There was no way out of walking to his execution. But his death would not be the end. In today's gospel, Jesus announces his death and his resurrection to his friends. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The human body exhibits poise in motion because it operates from its own center of balance, a fixed gravitational point toward which the head, the torso, and limbs are in constant self-correcting coordination. A skillful leader reveals just how breathtakingly beautiful this poise can be. In biblical terms, the heart is our moral center of balance. Moral formation begins with external factors like family and cultural expectations. But it reaches maturity only when it is internalized and fully integrated. Jeremiah 31, the prophet describes the new covenant God forms with his people, not by imposing the law, but by writing it on their hearts. Psalm 51, the psalmist says that God's mercy restores us in right relationship by cleansing our hearts of sin. Most of Jesus' life was spent preparing for his final years of public ministry. The gospel gives us only a glimpse of his early years. But from what happens later, we can suppose that his hidden years were spent forming the heart he operated out of in his preaching and healing ministry work. He had already gone to the heart of the human struggle for meaning. And from Hebrews 5, chapter 8, it says, By his suffering, he earned obedience. And so when the Greeks, Hellenist Jews in Jerusalem for Passover, told Philip they wanted to see Jesus, they were drawn to him as the dream of Greek art and philosophy. A human being is perfect symmetry and balance. Yet, this encounter also highlights the clash between Greek perfection and the mystery of the crucifixion what St. Paul later called a stumbling block for Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, from 1 Corinthians chapter 123. Jesus does not spare these seekers. 
but tells the strong Semitic parable of the seed that falls to the ground and dies as the only path to fulfillment. You remember John 12, 25 that we heard from our scripture reading. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will save it. Modern humanism has embraced the notion of personal perfection through education, exercise, diet, travel, and has aesthetic beauty. Our consumer culture promises this perfection in the countless products it sells, including cosmetic surgery and hormone therapy to give us the lifestyle that passes for a full, satisfying life. What else is there? Our Lord Jesus Christ shocks his visitors with the paradox he himself is about to embrace. Death on a cross. It is by his execution that he will establish the fixed measure and still point of the new universe. This is self-emptying love. Jesus reveals God as the one who empties his heart into the world even as it rejects the divine offer of reconciliation. God's unconditional love transforms enemies into friends, cleanses the heart of selfishness, and restores the center of balance to a world disjointed and disoriented by human self-centeredness. Jesus will be lifted up, crucified and raised, and will draw everything to himself. Jews and Gentiles, all people who want to, full, to, to live full lives and are invited to follow Jesus' example. Brothers and sisters, in this Lenten season, perhaps we should ask, what in us, pride, grudges, envy, hate, needs to die and be broken open so that God can bring forth abundant life for the sake of the world? Lent is a school for learning how to walk upright. Give your heart to the healer and your mind to the teacher, and everything will come into balance and focus. This is what it means to be a full human being and a child of God. If we only want to be self-satisfied, we will postpone our own arrival at true fulfillment, at eternal life, a life of generous love and mutual forgiveness leads to the inner life of God. Friends, this is where we are headed and where we will find happiness, both in this world and in the eternity. This is the heart of the matter and the secret of life. Praise and thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus, it is hard to follow your call sometimes, especially when it means letting go of things that we hold, that we held too long. Give us grace to die to ourselves daily so that we might live for you and for your coming kingdom. Amen.
as we prepare our spirit to offer prayers on behalf of our church community, our neighborhood, our family, and those whom you have association with, whether at work, your neighbors, or extended families. Remember those who are sick, those who are continuing to fight this uh, COVID, those that have been affected, and the caregivers that care for those individuals, and our front liners. Please continue to lift them up in your prayers, and for those who have died, and those who are grieving. And for our world, for us to come together as one race, the human race, we are all created in God's good image. And so when we see a person, an individual, stranger they may be, they are a spiritual being, divinely made by this creator, our amazing God. Let us pray. Dear friends, we are people called into a lasting covenant with God. Let us pray with grateful hearts for the whole world, for our neighbors and for ourselves, that we as members of God's human family may remember and be grateful for God's generous calling. Lord Jesus, you learned obedience in your suffering. You were lifted up on our behalf. You show us the depth of God's love. Lord, have mercy upon us and hear our prayers of petitions. We pray for compassion toward those who have broken relationships with us. In this time of new beginnings, we pray, Lord, have mercy. For those places where flawed or broken relationships have led to cruelty, hate, violence, or war, in this time of new beginnings, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. For the humility and courage to seek forgiveness from those we have injured or offended. In this time of new beginning, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. For all those in need throughout the world, for the sick and dying among us, and for those who have died, and those who will die alone. In this time of new beginnings, we pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. O God of compassion, you know our imperfections and constantly wipe out our offenses. Forgive us and call us to be your best people. Hear our deepest concerns and help us to remember who we are. We ask these things in the name of your beloved Son, who gave himself for us and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> 